I thought I would try something a little bit different today. <clears throat> so my reading response for our core two research class for this book, Genesis and Development of Scientific Fact, Fact by Ludwig Fleck. Um, it's really about a scientist who was unfortunately captured by the Nazis after he had already been quite established and did quite a bit of uh, scientific research. He was captured by the Nazis and forced to work for them. Um, most of his family was killed. I don't believe he had children, but I, my recollection is that he had um, extended family that died uh, thanks to the Nazis. I tried to relate this to our research and honestly wasn't very successful. I have to say that I did enjoy the book because, mainly because once I knew the history of the person who wrote it, I had a whole much higher level of respect for him. Um, one of the things that it says in the descriptive analysis on page 155 is that Fleck sheds light on the way ideas, concepts, and theories are shared by individual members of the scientific community. The same could really be said for any research endeavor. Um, as we discussed in class, theories are arrived at, and we didn't want to use the word prove. Um, in science, you can prove certain things. Um, I know that from my own scientific background. But technologies change, so perhaps the word proof is not a good word for us to use. Uh, one of the things that I did want to highlight <clears throat> in this text that I found pretty interesting is on page 20 under his chapter 2 general observations. He says, against this we would argue that there is probably no such thing as complete error or complete truth. Sooner or later a modification of the law of conservation of energy will prove necessary then we will perhaps be obliged to fall back upon abandoned error. That's where I found something that I could relate to genealogy and my research for genealogy. There are certain um, facts um, about my family history that have been passed down through generations, but I'm not so sure whether they're true or not. Um, we have a a legend in the family that there was a person in the Civil War on the Union side who was shot in the stomach and managed to survive and continue um, as an adult and raise children. There's another one that says that uh, the Dutch ancestor that we have married a Seneca Indian princess. Well, there's no such thing as really a princess, but apparently the daughter of a chief. I don't know if that's really true or not. I don't know how I'm going to get back that far. I'm trying, I'm working on it, and we'll see what we find out. It's, you know, entirely possible that none of that is really true, or it's possible that it is true. So, <clears throat> taking Fleck's idea that things can change, theories can change, um, I'm going to use that as a thought to help me with my genealogical research because the only real facts and proof that we have right now is I'm alive, my heart's beating, we can prove that I'm sitting right here. Um, I don't really know enough about my ancestors and I think I'm going to have my work cut out for me. Um, I've been finding little facts every day. I did find my mother's family um, in the 1930 census, it listed my grandfather as the head of household, um, his wife Ruth, definitely the right name, all the children, including my mother, Evelyn, who was born in 1929, and this was the 1930 census, and she was listed as being one year old. The interesting thing about the census is it gave the dates of birth, not only just the age, but it gave the dates of birth of each member that was found to be in that household. I also found some ha family history on my father's mother's side um, and found his grandmother and grandfather 
they were elderly and they lived alone in New Bedford. And they were the right names, the right dates of birth, according to my family. So I've just begun to dig and I'll have some theories. I'm not sure if proving them is the right word or proof is the right word, but I'll be working on that and enjoying the ride the entire way. Thanks.